Hey everyone, this is Heidi from Hands Occupied and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to knit the anemone stitch. Right here in front of me is the anemone stitch. This stitch is worked over a multiple of four stitches across and worked over the course of four rows vertically. You can see here that this really dense kind of old-timey looking stitch has a definite right side and wrong side. And it's one that you might not have come across before, so let's take a quick dive into how to work the anemone stitch. Like I said, we are going to work over a multiple of four stitches to accomplish the anemone stitch. The first row of this stitch is a wrong side row, so we're going to have our working yarn towards us to start. Now we're going to insert our working needle into the front of the first loop, just like we are going to purl it normally. But every purl stitch of this wrong side row in the anemone stitch is worked with two wraps per stitch. So we wrap it once, like we're working any purl stitch, but then we're going to wrap it a second time to get this stitch to work. Then we draw our working needle back through with both loops and sweep that first stitch off of our non-dominant needle. Let's do that again. Inserting your working needle into the front of the next loop, you're going to wrap that needle twice and without working too tightly, draw the needle back through and sweep this stitch off. And we're going to keep working like that all the way across this first wrong side row. All right, that is row one, a wrong side row, done. So we started out with eight stitches for demonstration's sake on our needle. And now we have 16 because of those two wraps per purl stitch on the wrong side. On row two, we are going to drop the excess loops and start to create this really beautiful stitch. Now we are on the right side of our work, about to work the next row. So we're going to begin by slipping all of the next four loops onto our working needle. In my case, that's the right hand needle. So we're going to slip one loop, dropping the excess wrap. So we're going to keep doing that three more times. And now we'll have four long loops on our right hand needle. Then we pass all four of those loops back to the left hand or non-dominant needle. And we're now ready to work with these long loops. Next, we're going to take all four of these loops as if they are one stitch. So we are inserting from front to back, knitwise this is called. We're inserting our right hand needle knitwise through all four of those long loops, right through the middle of it. You need to make sure you're catching all four of those loops at one time and that you're not splitting any of your yarn in the process. Now we're going to do something called a knit four together, purl four together, and we're going to do that twice in these same four stitches. So if you've ever worked a knit front back, which is abbreviated KFB, this action might feel kind of familiar. So we're going to wrap that yarn and draw one loop under these four long loops. Then we're going to bring the working yarn between both needles to the front. And now we can pull that working yarn down. And that lets us insert the right hand needle purl wise into those same four loops. Wrap the yarn and draw it through. Then we need to do that same thing again. So we bring the working yarn to the back between our needles. Then inserting the right hand needle through all four loops again, we knit four together. Then bring the working yarn to the front and draw it down before inserting that needle through all four loops a final time and drawing under a purl stitch. Finally, you'll sweep the whole mess off. So now it kind of just looks like this tightly wound loop or kind of like a mess on your needle. But if you look at the finished swatch here, you can see that they tessellate kind of like a checkerboard into this really lovely floral or anemone pattern. So let's see how to do that knit four, purl four, knit four, purl four action one more time. We are working with the last four stitches on our needle with two wraps per stitch. So we need to get rid of those extra wraps first. So slip one and drop, two and drop, three and drop, four and drop, and slip all of those long loops back to the left hand needle. 
It's really important not to twist these loops, by the way. Otherwise, the stitch won't turn out quite so beautifully. Now, just like before, knit four together through all four of those long loops. And now bring your yarn to the front, inserting your needle behind it, purl four together. Bring the yarn to the back, knit four together in those same four loops. Bring the working yarn to the front and down, and we'll finish it out with a purl four together. And if you've done this correctly, at the end of your row, you should have the same number of stitches that you cast on initially. So for demonstration's sake, I had done eight, which is four times two. So there you go. That's the basic action of the stitch. But to get it all diagonally and pretty and checkerboarding so nicely, <laughs> we need to do that same action, but slightly staggered. So let me show you rows three and four of this ultimately pretty easy stitch once you get the hang of the knit four, purl four together action. Now we're going to work row three, which is again a wrong side row. Row three begins with purl two. And now for the rest of the row, except for the last two stitches, we are going to purl each stitch, but with two wraps per stitch. So that looks like this. Inserting your needle purlwise, wrap it twice. Without working too tightly, you then swing it under and you're done. Keep doing this action until there's just two stitches left in the row. And then you end out the row with two simple, plain, one wrap purl stitches. And you'll see in a second why. Turning to the right side of our work, we are going to start out row four with just knitting two stitches, just a good old K2. And now for all those stitches in our rows with those elongated loops, we do the action that you'll remember from row two. So slip the next four, dropping the excess loop to the right needle. By the way, in knitting, if they say slipping a stitch and they don't indicate whether it should be purlwise or knitwise, go ahead and assume it's purlwise, fun fact. <laughs> now we are going to sweep those elongated loops back to the left-hand needle before inserting our needle knitwise through all four loops at once. Then we are going to knit four together purl four together in the same four loops. And then knit four together, purl four together one more time to finish that out. This section of the knit four, purl four together twice is a bit unusual in knitting. And again, this is kind of an old fashioned stitch, but it's really fun if you're going for unique texture. And honestly, I just kind of get bored of a life of stuck knit and rib stitch over and over and over again. So I enjoy this to mix it up. When you have finished working all the way across row four and only two stitches remain, all you gotta do is knit two. And that, my friends, is how to work the anemone stitch, which you can see much better in this much larger swatch. Anemone stitch is not one you encounter every day in your knitting life, but it's a really fun one to mix things up. If you've got any questions, go ahead and leave us a comment, like if you like this video, and subscribe for even more. I've been Heidi, and don't forget to keep your hands occupied. Mm -hmm.